Hey everybody, have you ever been going around your hometown? Or maybe you're visiting somewhere and uh, you look around and say, man, there's a lot of traffic around here. There seems to be a lot of people. You know, maybe this would be a good place to build a self-storage facility. Well, in fact, there's a couple of really key things that you have to know before you're gonna look at buying an existing storage facility or whether you're gonna build one. So we're gonna talk about something called supply index, okay? So we're gonna look at uh, What's the gross square footage we have in a market in terms of how many facilities are already here? How much actual supply is already serving this market, okay? Uh, but then also, how many people are here? And so you can always go to any given town uh, and go to uh, you know any town USA in your web browser and look up and see how many people are there total. But uh, as you know, a self-storage market is a micro market, so it's really one, three, and five miles. So the question is, how do I get that narrow? How am I able to get the population data within a one, three, five? So I'm going to show you a little tool. We're going to go to the computer here in a second, and uh, we're going to help you be able to answer the question of how do you get that population data. So then when you know the square footage and then you know the population data, you can actually calculate your supply index, and that'll actually answer the question for you, is this area oversaturated? Uh, is it undersupplied? Would it be good to build a property here? Should I buy an existing property here? Uh, so bear with me. It's going to take about 15 minutes to show you this tool. We're going to go to the computer, and uh, hopefully afterwards you'll have a little more knowledge to be able to make an informed decision. So this is a public storage here that I'm looking at in the browser. And so I think I'll cover this really quickly because I think most of you already know this. But if you hover over any particular uh, storage property, you can go in and use some of the built-in tools right in the browser in Google to figure out uh, how many total rentable square feet you're dealing with. So if I were to come in and right-click on this uh, property here and say measure distance, I can just go ahead and click around the boundaries of this building here all the way and connect it and you can see here I'm looking at the uh, total area 11,952 square feet for that particular building um, really rough but for our purposes that would be fine and so what I would do ultimately is go and measure every one of these buildings and I can figure out the total uh, rentable square foot available at this facility uh, building on that I would go and find uh, every other facility in the 135 mile radius of the subject property that I'm looking at and I would do the same thing and ultimately I could find the total amount of square footage in the property uh, again the tough part is then going from that to well, okay what about the population I mean I can get I can look up population for a city but how do I get uh, population into that narrow uh, of, a, of a boundary the one three and five mile so we're gonna take a look at that <clears throat> um, uh, there's a really cool tool over here called ArcGIS. Uh, it's it's actually produced by Esri. Some of you may have been familiar with Esri reports, getting population, demographic data, income data, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but this is a tool. I actually have gotten a free trial for this. You do have to pay for it, but there's a lot you can actually do on a free trial. So I'm going to show you... Um, sort of how to do this uh, using the free trial and if you were to look at this get a trial yourself uh, play around with it um, if you like it um, you know purchase the service it's I'm sure it's a great service and so they have pricing information you can take a look at it and uh, decide if that's something that's uh, valuable to you uh, depending on the number of uh, studies that you're going to be doing in, in various uh, areas as you're looking at storage properties to buy so uh, for those of you that are investors this could be uh, uh, valuable to you for properties that you're looking at uh, if you're a coach this could be a great resource to pass along to your students and obviously for students this will just be good for you as well uh, to get some practice and and to uh, uh, do a, a really high level uh, study of the uh, self-storage facilities and around your subject property okay so let me go ahead and enter my information here for those of you are, that are wondering um, who Don Griffith is, that's actually my alter ego. So uh, my name is John Griffith, but anything, you know, at the office, anytime something goes wrong, I just say, well, it's Don Griffith, this guy, you know, it's a good, complete, uh, you know, complete wise guy. He's always doing everything wrong. So yeah, that's, that's uh, Don Griffith here. But uh, once I log in, um, what they'll do is when you get a free trial, they'll create this little uh, account with your, uh, uh, usually they want to know an organizational name. Uh, when you log in and so um, I just created a name here that uh, basically one of the properties that I purchased recently and so it's got all of that information in there really the key part that we want to zero in on this is uh, back to the mapping functionality 
And again, you can get to this just going to ArcGIS.com. Uh, that's a, that's another thing. And actually, that's probably where I want to go because I'm not even on it. I actually was on Esri because I was looking a little more into the company. Uh, let me do the same thing here. So when you log in, it'll bring you to your organizational homepage. Uh, it'll tell you how many credits you have, what you've been doing in the last 30 days, your licensing information, all that good stuff, uh, if you were to actually continue to use the service. But I'm still on a free trial here for the next few days, so I thought I would take the opportunity to show it to you. So from here, if you just go up to this little mapping section, really the map, that's the main part we want to look at. Okay, so first thing we need to do is start with an address. Uh, we want to zero in uh, on the particular property that we're interested in buying. And so just pulling from this sample here, let's say that we've already done all of the work to measure the square footage on the various properties in the one, three, and five. We, all, we have all that data. And now we really just want to get some population data to, to augment that so that we can actually calculate uh, not only to, total square foot available, uh, but what's the square footage available per person. Uh, and then you could even uh, calculate a supply index from that to figure out the saturation level there in your market. So let me, I'll just grab this address here and we'll kind of use that address as our starting point. So if I go over to the map, I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in. So you've got it right there. So it'll zoom in on that for us and you can see here all the buildings. Uh, so we know we have the right place, the storage property. Um, one of the first things I'm going to do is click this little button here called add to map notes. And all that's going to do is that's going to create a layer and it's going to allow that location, that little pin that we've set to be available for selection. Uh, so then when we get to the point of, of further uh, enriching that with data. So usually it sticks it on here as map notes. Uh, I don't like that. So I typically go in, hit the little ellipses and just say rename. Uh, and we'll just call this subject property. And say OK. Uh, so from here also what I like to do is add a base map. Um, this is completely optional. You don't have to do this, uh, but there's various uh, really rich imagery that you can get through uh, through the Esri data. So I'll typically just go with uh, you know your standard satellite type of imagery. Okay, I'll zoom out just a bit here. So from there, uh, we've got a point. Uh, now we need to get our one, three, and five mile uh, radiuses uh, drawn around this. So what we do, go over here to analysis under perform analysis. A lot of different data here. Uh, it's a very powerful tool. I'm not going to go into a lot of the options, but uh, we're just going to zero in to what we want to do for this purpose. So you would go under Use Proximity, uh, and it's just saying you're going to, uh, as essentially, you're going to calculate uh, data within the proximity of a certain point. In this case, our subject data. So I'm going to click on Create a Buffer. Uh, and that buffer is just going to be a boundary uh, by which we can enrich it with data. By default here, it's got uh, one miles uh, set up. Um, so if you read the instructions here, if you want to do multiple buffers, you just enter distances separated by spaces. So in our case, we want to do a one, a three, and a five mile buffer uh, from that point, which is our subject property. And uh, after you do that, it's going to create a layer uh, of, of a certain name. And so what I'll do typically is I'll just call this uh, something meaningful, 135 uh, mile radius. And it's going to save the result in whatever the current account you're in. So the good old Don Gruffith is going to get that information here. Um, and then uh, what we're going to say is run analysis. And so for here, um, it's uh, doing all the churning, all the geographical stuff, all of the math calculations, and it's going to end up putting a one five or sorry one three and five mile radius around the point uh, that you've selected. Interestingly enough, it seems like it takes longer to do this uh, than it does to actually then enrich those layers uh, with data. So uh, as soon as we get that, let me go ahead and zoom out because. Um, the 1, 3, and 5 will be shown completely here uh, on the map in various colors. Let me go a little farther. Okay. So you can see here we do have our 1, and then our 3, and then our 5-mile radius. Uh, so cool. Great. Uh, doesn't really help us at this point. So uh, all we need to do at this point is, uh, again, we've created another layer here called 1, 3, and 5-mile radius. We go back up to analysis. This time we're going to go to data enrichment. So we're going to select enrich layer. So this is you can enrich any you can enrich any layer on the map already 
uh, with with additional information. So we don't want to do subject property. We want to select the uh, one three five mile buffer that we just selected here. Uh, we just created. So we'll select that, and then we have this option here. This is really the power behind it to be able to select variables to enrich uh, this boundary. So a lot of different things right off the bat. Population is the first one. Um, you can also do income uh, if you want to get median household income within the one three five. If you want to do age, number of houses, uh, uh, health, education, jobs, all kinds of different options that you can choose here. Um, go in and play around with this. Uh, add, add in all kinds of things. You can add in multiple variables here at one time, uh, but for our purposes, we're just going to do population. Uh, and this is uh, Esri's data, ultimately, uh, most likely pulling from uh, census data. So you get really nice up-to-date information here. We get 2018 total population. Um, as you can see, some of the other options, uh, 2023 population. So if you're looking at, hey, where are things going? Uh, you know, what's the projected uh, increase in population? Um, they've even got a little sub point here that says 2018 to 23, uh, 2023 annual growth rate. So they've already done some of those calculations for you to show you the growth rate in the area. So those can also be really popular, uh, you know, powerful things to use. So we're going to stick with the total population for now for 2018. And we're going to apply that. Okay, so we've got that selected here. And uh, normally you could select uh, some distances. How many miles away do you want to enrich this data? Uh, this is not selectable here since we've already selected a layer that is already bound by certain dimensions. Uh, it's just going to be within those dimensions. So we don't really have to worry about it at this point. Uh, again, giving this a meaningful uh, title to use. I'll just say 135 uh, population. Okay. And we're going to run that analysis. And then what it's going to do is it's going to overlay that data into our 1, 3, and 5. Um, it's probably going to look a little weird because it actually just sort of smashes that layer over top of the layer that we already had. Um, that visibility, so the opaqueness gets a little weird, but it's actually not a big deal because we don't really care how visible it is. We just want to look at the underlying data. Okay. So as you can see here, again, it looks a little foggier. Uh, if you wanted to, you could really make any of these things visible or not visible. So really the only thing we're interested in is the 135 population. Uh, now the real key to this, of getting that underlying data, is to actually take a look right under here. When you hover over any of these, you get some little sub-options, some icons under here. If you see this and I hover over it, it says Show Table. That's really what we're interested in here because that's going to give us the underlying data that's powering the visualization on the map. So when I pull this up, okay, it's clear that we've got our one, our three, and our five mile uh, records here. Um, what we want to do is scroll all the way down to the end. Okay. Oh, and if we, what I'm seeing here is area and square miles. Um, and, and I'm expecting to see population data. I think what happened was is that if I look up here, the one, three, and the five mile radius is selected, uh, but not the population. So I clicked on the wrong thing, in other words. So we're going to go under one, three, and five mile population. Click the table. Okay. So then hopefully we'll get the extra data added on there that we wanted. So we got one, three, and five. Go all the way down to the end. Okay. So then we've got this 2018 total population field added on. Okay, so in this particular area, in the one mile, you've got 2,573 people. Uh, 57,949 for the three mile, and then 118,677 for the five mile. And then you can actually click on these, and it'll show you uh, sort of visually on the map which ones you're clicking on. Um, now, the interesting thing here is that this is actually just population within the band. It's isolated to the band itself. Um, and so, for instance, this 57,000 here is only the three-mile band, not including what's in the one mile. So if you wanted to get cumulative, you would have to add those together. And so 2,573 for your one mile plus 57,000. 949 for your three mile. So that's essentially, you're saying 60,000 people uh, within three miles of the subject property. Uh, you would have to go on and additionally add the 118, 677 if you wanted to get the total. Okay, so really we're looking at 179,199 people uh, within a five mile radius. 
and this is all in the Charlotte metro area. So of course it's a it's a highly highly populated area, very dense. So the cool thing about this though is that once you have this data, all you have to do is to go back and get the previous data that you've collected um, from gathering the total square footage. And then you can do your calculation here to get the supply index and see that saturation level. This is extremely important if uh, your main value add strategy for the property hinges on a drastic sort of a lease up, whether it's a struggling property that needs to be leased up or uh, whether you're considering a new build uh, or a conversion or something of that matter where it's going to be really a, a from scratch, ground up, lease up type property. It's, you, you really want to... Um, understand sort of the saturation that's going on um, so that's that's really easy again the cool thing uh, is that once you have this one five three sorry one three five mile radius layer set up <clears throat> you can go back and do an additional uh, enrichment to that so if I went back to the analysis and let's say go back to data enrichment and let's say that I wanted to do <clears throat> some income data added on top of that all I'd have to do is go back, choose that 135 mile uh, radius again. Go back into select variables. Uh, let's see, income. Let's just do 2018 median income. Do apply. We could have done all this right from the beginning altogether, but you know, if you decided you wanted to go back later, uh, you could do that. And so we'll just do 135 median income. Go ahead and run our analysis. Okay, so median income. We'll go ahead and we'll check out this table. And uh, again, just double check up here. You can see the name of the uh, table you're looking at, just to be sure. There are one, three, and five mile uh, records here. Scroll all the way down to the end. Of course, and we can see our median household income in each of these bands. Looking pretty good, not bad. Um, so uh, this is a really easy way, a really easy tool that you can use to get that population data to overlay that with the uh, square footage data that you've gathered uh, either through uh, the browser, Google browser, or through Google Earth or something like that. I will say that uh, this is not a substitute for a feasibility study in, in any stretch of the imagination. Um, those are still uh, highly, highly valuable, but uh, this is just to get a ballpark. This is just to do a high level, uh, maybe to get comfortable if you're looking at a property and the main value uh, ad strategy is, is either some sort of drastic lease up or um, you're just looking at some vacant land, thinking of a new build or a conversion. Uh, this is something that could give you a high level to, to give you some amount of comfort as far as going in with an offer uh, that you would obviously then validate with a feasibility study at a, at a later time. Okay, so now that we have the uh, tools to get the population data, and also I touched a tiny little bit on getting the gross square footage in the market, I'll come back on that if we need to, but now that we have those pieces of data, in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to calculate the supply index, and then, uh, you know, what the heck does that mean, and how is that gonna help me? So stay tuned, uh, check out the next video, and, uh, and hopefully after that, you'll have a, a really good tool set in your tool belt that you can use if you go into any given market, or maybe you have a, a particular property you're looking at, or maybe you have a, a piece of vacant land and you just want to see what's going on in the 135 mile, uh, this will help you uh, make a better decision.